Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your contributions so far, and uh, and you have given th thorough responses, which I think will be very helpful to us as well. Um, uh, just a couple of things. So you have here that uh, your you the development of the um, offshore renewable energy assembly and marshalling facility is you you aim to have that completed by 2028 and i suppose ob the obvious question is that we require five gigawatts of offshore renewable energy by 2030 in order to hit our targets um under the climate action plan and um, does that in any way um should that be speeded up i suppose um, in order to help us with that and what is required in order for that to be speeded up um, and the second thing is in relation to the to the rail freight, um, how important is it to have the um, rail freight strategy implemented by 2040 in order to, to help meet all of these targets? Um, and having been in Scotland and spoken to some of the companies involved, um, it seems quite clear that pipeline is really important for companies in order to be able to invest. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? And so, you know, the importance perhaps of us not just focusing on what's there at the moment, but actually doing everything in tandem so that we have the short, the medium, the long term, not just in order to, uh, to get it done, but also because that's what investors require in order to, to be able to even invest in the short term in Ireland. Thanks. So, yeah, look, I'll take the first one and then I'll hand over the rail freight one to Jerry. Um, yeah, in relation to our intentions for the March report in 2028, that is stage one, if you like. The scale of this, as I said, is so large that it will take a multi site approach. Um, and, and, you know, we, you have the ESB with Money Point as well. So, you potentially will have two deep water facilities ready and available by 2030 um, on the Shannon Estuary. But for the full 80,000 megawatt realisation, which is over the medium long term, Two won't be enough. So, but we do have a number of sites, other sites on the estuary that we're looking at as well. Um, but on your question of speed, and absolutely spot on, investors need certainty. We need a pipeline. The timeline, lead times for this infrastructure, on the port side, but also on the wind, uh, wind farm side, as I said, is seven to ten years, uh, and that's the type of window we need. So, therefore, that's why the ask today is to bring floating offshore wind on stage front and centre right now. We cannot leave it till 2030. If we do that, we won't be ready to invest until 2038-ish. Because the way, as you know, the way it works is when we go to fund our infrastructure, our funders are going to look for certainty. Well, and if there is no auctions, for example, for any megawattage or gigawatts on the Atlantic floating offshore, you know, there, uh, there's, there's no demand, even though we have the resource. So that's why it's critical that the actual pace for floating offshore has to move up and that there is that 10 gigawatts that we've pointed out that needs to be now put in for floating offshore to give certainty to the sector to be able to plan against. Because at the moment there is nothing there. So you cannot, even though there is 80 megawatts out or gigawatt there, there is no process to, to uh, engage the market. Uh, and that's why it's critically important that floating offshore is, is, is we kind of ditch this 2030 target of five gigawatts. That is a local demand. This is a pan-European play. Um, and we're not looking at it from our view. We're not looking at it the right way around. It's a bit like the tail wagging the dog. The big, the big uh, um, um, resource here is 80. It's not five, it's 80. What do we need to do to unlock 80 right now? It's floating offshore. We need to get floating offshore off the ground and facilitate floating offshore. The market is more than willing. We see that with Scotland, totally oversubscribed to. Uh, so the market is more than willing. Um, what we need to do is catch up with the market as a country and I think set the stage and allow the market to engage with our system, which we agree is the right approach. It's just the pace of rollout. Um, so the, if that answers the first yeah. part of your question, Jerry, you want yeah, just to throw in a, a couple of points on that, Senator, it's very important to note, I suppose, the, um, uh, the speed of our reaction. I mean, the potential is there. We've all identified what that potential is there. Uh, only last weekend, uh, the Global Wind Energy Council uh, released a report there that, that, that put Ireland front and centre as being one of the pacemakers for uh, offshore renewable energy uh, over the next decade or beyond. Um, 
so the the opportunity is there. It's what we can do for in the value add for ourselves across the board. Uh, it really is. Uh, if we miss the opportunities, the supply will be got from, from elsewhere. And, and Pat mentioned earlier about the UK being competition and that North Sea development and the Scotland developments. They're all potentially taking from our uh, route to market for, uh, for the product that's there in, in the Atlantic. So it's important that we engage with that. But it not only brings with that, it also uh, brings with it the opportunity to, to assist ourselves. So the potential for green fertilisers manufacturing uh, in, in Ireland is, is, is a very real prospect as well, uh, coming from uh, green ammonia production, that, that, that this can be brought to Ireland, which can assist our farmers. But one of the other things that leads into my answer in relation to the real uh, aspect of things uh, is that um, the potential is there and it's all interlinked together. Because if we get, we say, global refuelling of shipping, then that brings with us the potential to create that a global transshipment hub, which shortens uh, supply chain routes for uh, Irish exporters and Irish importers uh, on their routes to market. So what we're trying to do is, is bring forward all this. If these supply chain routes are altered and moved elsewhere, then we miss that opportunity as well. And as part of that, the, uh, the rail connectivity of the port is paramount. Uh, we'd be a, a terrific advocate uh, of, of not just the reopening of the, the Foyne to Limerick rail line, which connects us in with uh, the National Rail Network, but also the uh, Irish Rail's developmental potential there for the distribution hubs that they've, pro they've proposed as part of their developmental plan for rail freight, but also the potential from uh, to assist in decarbonising Dublin, as it were, by taking the likes of cargo from the west of Ireland down a western rail corridor uh, and to be exported out of uh, a west of Ireland port. So I think it's, it's the overall solution. Uh, the the infrastructure has to be put in place in order to facilitate that, but it's, it's, it's certainly it's, uh, it, it's, we have it targeted. That's great. That, that was music to my ears mentioning the Western Rail Corridor, so I appreciate that. Thank you. I was about to say that Senator O'Reilly would be making a video for her social media <laughs> on the back of this.